Hello and welcome to another edition of Back in Shape with T. I'm your host, Tarashe, and today my freestyle ramble is going to be on Clarence Bass, one of my favorite bodybuilders of all time. He would consistently weigh himself to get a body fat measurement of 2.4% using hydrostatic weigh-in at the Lovelace Medical Center. The guy kept impeccable records for multiple years. He's a lawyer by trade, but a person who was consistently motivated by bodybuilding and would bodybuild in his home around about three in the morning. He would say that he'd get up and start his workout consistently. Good enough cardio. He didn't believe in skipping cardio. And even to this part in his uh, late life, he'll do the concept to a lot of Tabata training for um, his cardio these days. But look at the detail. He was Mr. Ripped. I remember back in the 80s and 90s when he was marketing his books, you would see him in the back looking like that big ripped nerd. He weighed approximately 152 pounds, 155 pounds. He started off bodybuilding from weightlifting. His body weight here was approximately 175 pounds. When he met Arthur Jones, Arthur Jones told him he was too big and bloated, that he needed to cut his weight. So he started cutting weight, and he kept his body weight for most of his bodybuilding career around about that 155, no more than 165 pounds with a body fat of up to 4.5%. In 1978, he experimented with steroids he took anabolic steroids. He was still able to keep his body in the high 160s while maintaining a very, very low body fat. He is the embodiment of putting the aesthetic of low body fat above bulk. He's the father of that super ripped, super conditioned community. He was a weightlifter, not, not just a bodybuilder, but an Olympic weightlifter. He would constantly work on his Olympic weightlifting form, even in his older age. He still incorporated some of his Olympic weightlifting as a part of his bodybuilding routine. I remember people telling me that side bends would make you thick and bulky on the side. If you do side bends with the dumbbell, he used to use 100-pound dumbbells and do side bends. Never got thick and bulky. That's because he always kept... His calories at a very sensible rate. He kept his protein rather high and his um, body fat low. Clarence would often eat anywhere from 167 to 172 grams of protein, around about 2,100 calories a day. Not a very big eater, but just enough to keep himself lean and fit with all of the exercises that he did. A consummate professional, a person who focused on posing and keeping a very low body fat. He is, as I said, a pioneer for today's super incredible natural bodybuilders. It is said that natural bodybuilding only has, as it's basically bailiwick, it has to take on the mantle for extreme conditioning because these guys do not expect to get bulky. You see great champions like Brian Whitaker from the WNBF, who really spent a great deal of his time focused on getting in a tremendous condition. This young man, Clement Yearwood, back in the day, never saw him out of shape, always focused on his conditioning. These people never were concerned with getting to be 200 or 250 pounds on stage. They always understood that staying in shape was the hallmark to what it means to be a bodybuilder. Of course, the posing was important. This young man from England, Rob Hope, who walked around at 172 pounds lean, he was a world champion for many, many years. These are the real heroes of bodybuilding. These natural bodybuilders who focus on keeping themselves lean and clean. Look at Justin Baker. Here's a young man who is sporting great muscle at 180, but understands conditioning is important, and he gets his body weight all the way down to 172 to step on stage. It's because of Clarence Bass that men like Justin Baker understand that conditioning is the key, not bulking up.